Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Now that we got ourselves a basic content browser, we can start using it to import assets and by that I mean dragging files that we would like to import and dropping them on top of the content browser. That would initiate whatever is needed to convert the content of the file into a format that can be used in the game engine. This episode however is not about dropping files onto content browser yet. It's about using Autodesk's FBX SDK to import mesh geometry from FBX files. As we often do at the start of videos, let me first fix a couple of typos from the last episode. Here we need to detach the event handler, so the plus should be a minus. Also I used the wrong font color for the save file dialog. And that's it. Let's close all files because we are going to be working in content tools project which is in C++. Before we start, let me show you what we need to do in order to be able to import from FBX files. What we are going to do is download and install the 2020.2 version of the FBX SDK. As you can see, there is no 2022 version yet and that's okay. We don't always need the latest with this one. In fact, the code that I'm going to write probably also works with earlier versions of this SDK. After installing it, we'll have the include and lib folders for use in our C++ code. So we need to point to these locations in our project. Here it says Visual Studio 2019, but I think it will work fine with Visual Studio 2022 as well. And we also have the samples that we can look into. In fact, I learned a lot about using this SDK just by studying the samples. The SDK is also reasonably well documented, although it's not always clear how some data structures are used or what some functions do. While I'm trying to look for the documentation, I suppose I could give you some background on the FBX format. FBX stands for Filmbox, which is a file format that was invented in mid-90s, primarily intended for saving motion capture data. Through the years, it was acquired by different companies and gained a lot of extra features. Its current owner is Autodesk, which offers an SDK for reading from and writing to FBX files. Unfortunately, its origin from the 90s are still reflected in this SDK. At least I assume the SDK was also mostly written in the 90s, which in and of itself is a poor excuse for the state it's in. Or Autodesk simply didn't bother spending resources on improving it. Probably a combination of all of these is the reason that it's notoriously slow and the fact that it can't be used multi-threaded doesn't help either. For that reason and the fact that the SDK license doesn't make it easy to be included with the source code of any product, there are software teams that write their own importers and exporters by directly parsing the data in the FBX files using unofficial file format specifications. This is not what we are going to do, since that would take a disproportionately large effort. There is also the option of using asimp, which is a well-known library that supports multiple file formats. However, this series is not about learning how to use different libraries, and I try to avoid them whenever possible. All is not doom and gloom, however, since I still think that FBX is a robust file format with a lot of support and features. I won't even be surprised if I'm not the only one who still prefers it over other formats, including GLTF. I already have the SDK installed, so all we need to do is to set a path to its include folder in our project settings. We can append it to the additional include directories in content tools project settings. Make sure that you select all configurations to avoid having to set it separately for each build configuration. Now I can include the FBX SDK header in our C++ files that call the FBX functions. In our case, I just added the FBX importer header file and later in this video, I'm also going to add the corresponding CPP file which contains the code for importing 3D geometry from the FBX files. As I said, the SDK can't be used multi-threaded, 
So I'll write a class that initializes and shuts down the SDK for each file that we want to import. Obviously, we need our data structures, which will contain the imported data. As you can see here, in primitive meshes, we are putting the data in a scene in order to process and pack it in a format that the engine will understand. However, instead of including the geometry header, I'll forward declare the structures that we need here. In the FBX context class, we'll have pointers to our scene and scene data. When we initialize FBX SDK, we create an FBX manager, and when we load an FBX file, we create an FBX scene, so we need to keep those pointers here as well. Since each file can use a different scale, we also need to retrieve the scene scale and convert it to meters, so that all vertex positions, or anything that has to do with a distance or a position, uses the same units in our engine. When an instance of this class is constructed, we will initialize the SDK and read in the file that we want to import. We also expect a pointer to scene and scene data structures to which we will write the results. I'll have the initialization and loading of the file happen in two different functions that I'll write in a minute. So if the initialization succeeds, we can load the FBX file, which will fill in the FBX manager and FBX scene pointers. Therefore, we know that everything is fine if we have got valid pointers to both of them. While I'm at it, I also add a function to get the scene scale. When we are done importing the file, we destroy both FBX scene as well as the FBX manager, which effectively unloads the file and frees all memory that was allocated by the SDK. We also zero out our own data for good measure. Okay, now let's implement these two functions. First, I'll add the FBX importer CPP file and include the geometry header, so we can use our data structures that we forward declared here. When importing an FBX file, we call a single function from the editor. This function will then create an FBX context, import the data, process and pack the scene and return it to the editor. The editor will then save the data along with some additional information that goes into the geometry asset file. As always, we are welcomed by dysfunctional intelligence and failing syntax highlighting. I remember someone suggesting that deleting the .vs folder would help intelligence come to its senses. So let's try that. Unfortunately, that didn't help, so let's carry on. Here we are calling the two functions that we already wrote a while back to process and pack the scene data. Now all we have to do is get the data from the FPX file. As I mentioned, the SDK functions can't be used multi-threaded, so we need to lock the FPX context since the editor will try and import files in parallel. After successfully creating the FBX context, we can import the scene.
But first we need to implement the initialize and load functions. Initialization is not that complicated. We create an instance of the FBX manager and set its input output settings. Building the project now, we get unresolved external errors, which tell us that we need to link with the libraries that contain the functions we are calling. We could set these libraries in the project settings, the same way we did for include path, but I find it easier to point to them using pragma directives like so. A guide to exactly which libraries should be used can be found in the Getting Started section of the FBX documentation page. We need to use at least these three libraries. Note that we use different paths depending on which build configuration we are on. When building the project now, we'll get a lot of warnings about missing PDB files. We can get rid of these warnings either by installing the PDB files that are offered in a separate installation, or by ignoring this warning in the linker settings. I don't want to install the PDB files, so I choose the second solution. Building the project now succeeds without warnings. Okay, where was I? I'm Batman! Oh yes, the IO settings. These settings determine which parts of the content in an FBX file the user wants to import. For example, we can choose to only import animations and ignore all the rest. We use the default settings, which simply imports everything. After initializing the SDK, we can try and load the FBX file. First, we need to create an FBX scene. Then we can import the file into this scene using an FBX importer. After the file was loaded into the scene, we can destroy the importer and get the scene scale. Now that the FBX file is loaded, it's ready for us to retrieve any data from it which we are interested in. Because the file can contain an entire scene with multiple objects, lights, cameras, animations, and so on, I'll write a function that gets the scene. For now, we are only interested in getting all of the 3D models. This function will have an optional parameter, so that we can call it to recursively traverse the node tree of the scene.
We start at the root of the tree and for each node we check if it's a mesh node or an LOD group node. If it's a mesh node, we call a function to get the mesh in that node and convert it into our mesh format. If it's an LOD group node, we call another function that will get all meshes within that LOD group and convert them to our mesh format. If you need a refresher on Primal Engine's geometry data structures, please feel free to watch these videos. Finally, we look at the child nodes of the current node to see if there are more mesh or LOD group nodes down the node tree. Obviously, we need to write these functions next. I'll add them to our class first. Let's start with getMesh function. Here we get this node as a mesh node and if that succeeds, we remove bad polygons. Bad polygons are the ones that have overlapping vertices. Next, we triangulate meshes if needed. Normally, the meshes are triangulated before we import them. Triangulating meshes in a 3D software gives us better control over how edges should flow. However, during development, it's okay to pass intermediate versions of the file that are not triangulated yet. After triangulation, we remove bad polygons again. Now we can create our own mesh and fill it in with the data. Because this mesh has no extra levels of detail, we set LOD threshold to minus 1. Next, we get the name of this node if it's not empty. If it is, we try to get the name from the mesh node, which in theory is the same node, but you never know. Finally, we need another function that will get the vertex data from the mesh node and fill it in our mesh data structure. If that succeeds, we add our mesh to the array of meshes and return. I think this is a good place to stop for today. Next time, we are going to write the function that gets the vertex data. We'll also implement the getLOD group function. Before I go though, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters. It's so great to see that people believe in this project and find this video series so useful that they are willing to support it on Patreon. It really keeps me motivated and I can't thank you enough for that. As always, thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!